Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the College of Glycation. This, again, is a series devoted to unraveling the science of how sugar impacts our bodies. I, once again, am Paul Reynolds. I'm a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. As your host for today's discussion, we're exploring a topic that I've been thinking about for a while. It's called glycation and polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR. PMR is generally classified as an autoimmune inflammatory disorder. And we're here today to link this malady with glycation. And I promise there is a clear link. If you've been with us through previous episodes, you know that glycation is a sneaky process where excess sugar in your blood binds to proteins, fats, and even your DNA. And in the process, it forms advanced glycation in products, or ages for short. And those ages can cause notable consequences over time. Think of it like rust forming in a car, but inside your body in this case, and the result is damaged tissues and accelerated aging. For newcomers, don't worry, we'll revisit the basics briefly before connecting the dots to this PMR condition that might hit closer to home than you think. Let's start with a quick refresher, therefore, on glycation. This isn't just about eating candy or sweets generally. It is a chemical reaction that happens when blood sugar levels run high, whether from a donut binge or chronic metabolic issues like diabetes. The sugar molecules latch onto proteins, creating these ages that will stiffen and weaken tissues over time. We've talked before about how this affects your skin, making it less elastic, or in your arteries, which in time raises heart disease risk. But today we're zooming in on its impact deeper in the body, into the connective tissues, bones, tendons, and even the fluid that keeps everything running smoothly. Picture your joints and muscles as a well-oiled machine. Glycation is like throwing sand into the gears. Over time and over the years, these ages accumulate, cross-linking proteins in your collagen and elastin, which are the scaffolding for your important connective tissues. There was a study published in 2018, the first of about eight studies I'll share with you today, and each of these are listed in the notes, so you're welcome to look at those on your own time later. Anyway, in 2018, there was a study published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, or JCI, and the authors showed that ages increase collagen stiffness in aging tissues, and thereby reducing flexibility and strength. Think of it as your body's version of turning supple leather into brittle cardboard. It just doesn't work well over time. Another paper from the journal Bone 10 years ago in 2015 found that glycation in bone cartilage correlates with fragility fractures, suggesting that bones become more brittle as sugar damage mounts. Now, tendons aren't spared either. There was an article published in the journal Matrix Biology, and the two lead authors were Avery and Bailey. They demonstrated how glycated tendons lose elasticity, making injuries more likely. This is the foundation we want to build on today, and it sets the stage for better understanding of polymyalgia rheumatica, or again, PMR. Now let's talk about this condition, PMR. It is a condition that's been puzzling for years. It's puzzled doctors and patients alike. It's an inflammatory disorder that's primarily striking people over the age of 50 years, causing aching and stiffness, primarily in the shoulders, the neck, and the hips. And it's often so severe that morning routines become a grueling challenge. The basics are straightforward. It's not arthritis, but it involves the immune system going haywire, targeting the synovial membranes and the fascia, the thin web-like layers that wrap your muscles and joints. 
a few years ago in 2020, there was a study in the journal called Rheumatology, and the study outlined its key characteristics. Bilateral pain, elevated inflammatory markers like CRP or C-reactive protein, and a rapid response to low-dose corticosteroids. The causes, well, that's trickier. It's likely a mix, most often, of genetic predisposition as well as environmental triggers, maybe an infection or stress, that might be the starting point that kicks off this immune overreaction. But here's where it gets interesting. As PMR progresses, the stiffness and the pain worsen. And the mechanisms behind that escalation do, in fact, tie back into glycation. In 2019, there was an article published in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases, and the researchers suggested that chronic inflammation in PMR may amplify tissue damage over time. <clears throat> and we're starting to see how glycation could be a silent partner in this crime. So let's dig into that mechanism a bit more. Fascia is the continuous connective tissue web that wraps around muscles, bones, and organs. It should glide. It should move. But that glide depends on, heavily depends on, really, the interstitial fluid, the fluid that bathes the extracellular matrix. And that fluid contains lubricating molecules like hyaluron and others. When this fluid becomes contaminated with glycated proteins, as well as oxidized sugars, it lubricates, its rather lubricating properties collapse. It becomes sticky. It turns from a lubricant into a liability. Imagine pouring sugary syrup into a hinge on your door instead of oil. It simply will gum up the works, leading it to ineffectiveness. In 2016, there was a study published in the Journal of Orthopedic Research. And in this case, researchers found that glycated molecules in the interstitial fluid impair its viscoelastic properties. So the viscosity and the elasticity. And what that did was it led to increased friction and stiffness in the associated connective tissues. In PMR, this could explain the limited range of motion. Those glycated sugars are clogging the system, and inflammation only makes it worse. Add in oxidative stress, where free radicals can damage cells, and you've got a perfect storm once again. In 2014, a paper published in Free Radical Biology and Medicine found that oxidative damage from ages are linked to the chronic inflammation observed in PMR. Both are hallmarks in the progression of PMR. Over time, this vicious cycle, again, glycation feeding inflammation and inflammation worsening glycation, locks joints in a state of rigidity, making even simple movements a struggle. And this is where the hypothesis gains traction. In patients with PMR, studies using muscle biopsies and microdialysis techniques have shown elevated levels of inflammatory cytokines, not just in the blood, but directly in the interstitial fluid of affected muscles. These cytokines, like IL-6 and TNF-alpha and others, may not only drive inflammation, but also reflect a compromised biochemical environment where glycation has already taken hold. Add to this the elevated interstitial levels of pain-inducing compounds like glutamate and prostaglandin E2. Both of those are also found in symptomatic muscles in PMR patients. And if you add all that together, you begin to see how this is a local process, not just a systemic one. Now let's connect this to something we can control, our diet. Specifically, myofascial pain syndromes, which often overlap with PMR. Myofascial pain comes from trigger points in the fascia 
those tight knots that make you wince when pressed. Diet plays a surprising role here, and the evidence points to ketogenic eating as a potential game changer. In 2021, there was a study in nutrients by researchers that showed a ketogenic diet low in carbohydrates and high in healthy fats reduced systemic inflammation by lowering blood sugar and age formation less fuel for the glycation fire. Remember, a ketogenic state will minimize blood glucose excursions, making less and less the prevalence of the starting points for glycation. In another paper published in Frontiers in Immunology just three years ago, McKenzie and co-workers found that ketosis shifts the immune response potentially easing myofascial pain tied to inflammatory triggers. For PMR patients, this could mean less stiffness if dietary sugar is minimized. It's not a cure, but it is a lever that we can pull to allow for help. Compare that to a high-carb diet, which in 2017, a study published in Diabetes and Metabolism found that increased ages and um, um, sugar abundance worsened inflammatory outcomes. The science is clear. What you eat matters, and it shapes how your fascia feels. So what's the takeaway? Polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR, is more complex than just old age aches and pains. It's a complex interplay of inflammation and glycation with interstitial fluid turning traitor under the influence of sugar. The evidence from peer reviewed studies backs this up from collagen stiffness to dietary impacts. And in fact, it can be a call to action for many. If you're battling PMR or just want to protect your joints generally from the effects of aging, consider how your diet fuels the process. I'm not saying ditch all bread overnight. Talk to your doctor. But the data suggests a ketogenic approach, low-carbohydrate approach, might ease the load. When we understand how glycation damages connective tissues, we can, in fact, take steps to interrupt that process and rebuild. Thanks for listening, everyone. By managing blood sugar, eating smart, and staying active, you can keep glycation in check and your tissues strong. Once again, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.